The British Prime Minister's scandalous parties in the middle of the lockdown not only outrage a large part of the voters, the police are now investigating and resistance is also growing in Boris Johnson's own party. In the Partygate scandal surrounding Boris Johnson, candidates for the successor to the British Prime Minister are now also publicly positioning themselves. Conservative MP Tom Tugendhat told Times Radio on Saturday that he would run if there was a vote. The head of the Foreign Affairs Committee in Parliament is regarded as an internal party critic of Johnson. It's up to us to throw our hats in the ring and it's up to the electorate, so first your fellow MPs and then your party members, then to vote, he said. As the Daily Mail reported, Tugendhat has the support of several Tory MPs from the center of the party. Johnson has been under heavy pressure for weeks over the Downing Street lockdown party scandal. It is eagerly awaited whether an internal investigation report contains indications that Johnson or his employees have broken corona rules. Then should, there should be an internal party vote of no confidence in the Prime Minister. However, as you already know, the report will initially only be published in a heavily censored version in order to avoid any bias in police investigations. Foreign Minister Liz Truss and Finance Minister Rishi Sunak are being traded as Johnson's successors. So far, they have publicly denied any interest. A report in the Telegraph newspaper increased the pressure on Johnson again. According to this, his now wife Carrie organized a birthday party for Johnson in June 2020 at Downing Street. In messages to a top official, Carrie Johnson urged staff to be serenaded and a cake brought to the Prime Minister. Private meetings between members of several households were indeed forbidden at that time. But Boris Johnson should be relieved now. The London police want to have the eagerly awaited report on lockdown parties in the British seat of government blacked out in essential parts. We have asked that the Cabinet Office report make minimal reference to the events being investigated by the Metropolitan Police, Scotland Yard said in a statement on Friday. And as I said, this should prevent any bias in the investigation. That was at least the justification from the police for that. And that comes after the police surprisingly announced on Tuesday that they would investigate the matter. But this already delayed the release of the internal government report by top official Sue Gray. The full report was actually expected last week. It is now questionable whether it will come to light at all before the police investigation is completed. So with this, Boris Johnson is still gaining valuable time because a heavily censored report is unlikely to endanger him at all. The danger of a revolt in this faction seems to have been averted for the time being if we don't count in people like Tugendhat now. The Scotland Yard announcement that caused anger in the parts of the population is really something we really can't, can't need now. The, the report by Sue Gray will be so important for the future of him, but with a lot of blacked out pieces, seriously. But uh, the British Guardian reported on this and according to the newspaper, the publication of the report is still imminent. And they said they learned this from government circles. And Political London is anxiously awaiting the report on Partygate, but it's still in the cabinet office where Officer Sue Gray appears to have completed the investigation into possible breaches of Corona measures. By mid-afternoon on Friday too, there was no sign that Gray had forwarded her report to the Prime Minister, who had promised to release the text immediately and in full. The search for those responsible for the delay gets lost in the Bermuda Triangle of the Prime Minister's office, the Cabinet Office and Scotland Yard. And as I said on Friday morning, the police leadership announced that it had not insisted on delaying the release of the text. However, they asked the cabinet to only publish minimal information on those cases that are concerning the police. Otherwise, they see a risk there, which a lot of people don't see, by the way, and experts as well. 
Because the police are interested in the eight most controversial cases, the Gray Report should only appear in a harmless version, so to speak. This in turn could be interpreted as whitewashing, which is why Gray is considering withholding the report entirely. At least that's what's been reported. 10 Downing Street claims they have no control over Gray's decisions. Should the report not be published or only published in a watered-down form, MPs would have to wait for the investigation to be completed. And that could drag on for weeks, and we would still talk about this for weeks. Many Tories wanted to make the outcome of the inquiry dependent on whether they support a no-confidence vote against Johnson. He now has time to win rebels over to his side. According to newspaper reports, he offered them concessions on political issues, such as the controversial increase in national insurance contributions, which many Tories want to prevent because of the rising cost of living. But there are still really important issues at the moment that Boris Johnson may even find quite fitting in this situation to avert from it. So another smokescreen, but in this time an important one. Because in view of the tense situation between Russia and Ukraine, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson plans to travel to the region in the coming days, according to government sources. Johnson is to be accompanied by a Secretary of State Liz Trust. It was set at least on Friday evening. An exact destination was not mentioned. Johnson also wants to call President Putin. A Downing Street spokeswoman said the Prime Minister was determined to speed up diplomatic efforts and use deterrence to avoid bloodshed in Europe. Johnson will urge Russia to withdraw and return to the negotiating table. In addition, according to government circles, the British side is to impose further sanctions against Russia. When exactly the trip and the phone call should take place was initially unclear. In view of a Russian troop deployment on the Ukrainian border, Western countries have repeatedly expressed concern that Moscow could be planning an invasion of the neighboring country. The Kremlin denies these allegations. Meanwhile, London, as I said, is still eagerly awaiting the investigative report into the lockdown parties. And Prime Minister Johnson, who is, is under massive pressure, is threatened with a vote of no confidence. But this trip is something else that can take the media away from it, especially when there's only a watered-down version or none at all. And after the USA, Great Britain also apparently wants to strengthen its uh, troop presence in Eastern Europe. We are talking about soldiers, fighter planes and warships. Elsewhere too, London wants to increase the pressure on Moscow because of the, the Ukraine conflict. And Great Britain is considering sending fresh troops because this could strengthen NATO's defenses, according to government circles in London. Prime Minister Boris Johnson will examine these measures to curb growing Russian aggression in the region, and he wants to do this this weekend. The Times newspaper reports that more soldiers are possible for Eastern Europe, but also more combat aircraft and warships, as I said. Johnson plans to travel to the area soon and also makes call uh, make a call to Russian President Vladimir Putin. But uh, when and, and at, uh, on what day he will be accompanied by Secretary of State Liz Truss, well, we will see. They are planning a visit to Ukraine probably and also might want to visit Moscow within the next two weeks. Government circles also said that the British Foreign Office wanted to tighten its sanctions against Russia on Monday. This was intended to meet Russia's strategic and financial interests, it said. The US is concerned about close ties with oligarchs. According to a report by the Times, the United States is concerned that London will not be able to decide on harsh economic measures against Moscow. Great Britain has tolerated suspicious investments from Russia for years. In London in particular, Russian oligarchs with close ties to the Kremlin invest a lot of money. If these sums were withdrawn because of British sanctions, this could hit the financial metropolis hard. And British Defense Secretary Ben Wallace warned that Russia could attempt to use massive cyber attacks and release compromising or harmful information to divide the West and sow confusion. 
Wallace is traveling to Hungary, Slovenia, the Czech Republic and Croatia for talks next week. And I'll see you in my next video. Bis gleich.